So we're gonna start by making these ovals into circles. Thank you guys in the comments for suggestions on how to do that. And then we're gonna be making them interactive. So when you actually click on them, they're gonna change. And then lastly, I got a cool Mobux tip in the comments as well that we're gonna implement. We're gonna be doing a root store that we're gonna set up today. So to start off, let's go ahead and fix these circles. Um, so we're gonna go over to our circle uh, style and we're going to remove the padding. Instead of padding, just doing a height and width. So a height of 50 and a width of 50. And then the recommendation was to do half of the height slash width as our border radius. So in this case, we'll do 25. So if we come back over here, you'll notice they are way more circular. Now the number itself is now off the plane. Uh, we can fix that by coming over to the circle text and just saying margin auto. Give that a save. Uh, and now we have it centered. The other thing I wanted to mention real quick is this gray that we put in there is kind of hard to read. So I just went into the color wheel that we used yesterday, pasted the brown that we're using, and uh, basically just replaced it with this. So just picked a different complementary color um, and uh, seems to work better. So I'm gonna just replace the gray text that we were using. So paste that in. And that's what it looks like. And you can see it still has that kind of faded view, but it's a little bit more readable. All right, so let's start with this uh, root store that I was talking about. We'll start with that. So the idea with this is we wanna be able to access multiple stores. So in our MobX, we have a router store and a workout store, and we wanna access both of them. And so one way to access both of them is, for example, we could say use context, um, and we could say uh, our workout store here and our router store and just have use context twice. Um, but downside of this, we can have use context a bunch of times, so it's kind of repetitive. And also, we may want to use the router store inside of the workout store or be able to access the data and vice versa. So that's the, what we're gonna set up with the root store. It's gonna give us access to both of those things, an easy way to access all the stores and also a way for the stores to see each other. So we're gonna create a file in our stores called root store.ts. And I'm gonna say export class root store. And the idea of this is uh, we're gonna be creating a field on the root store for every single store that we have. So I'm gonna say router store. And we're just gonna say is a new router store. And uh, we need to export it. Export, and we're no longer need, gonna need the context, uh, which will, uh, the router store context, because we're just gonna create a single context for the root store. So I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna remove it from the workouts store as well and export it. All right, so back to our root. So we have a router store, and then we're gonna be passing in uh, this, which I'll explain in a second. So we're gonna do a workout store here as well. All right, so the reason why we're passing in uh, this is that way we can access the all the different stores that are on there. Uh, to be able to get this work to work, we just need to go over to our router store and accept this as a constructor. So uh, let me just save all these files, come over to router store, and here we're gonna say constructor, and here we're gonna take a root store as the prop, or really this is just the first parameter of the constructor. I'm gonna say root store. I'm gonna say this dot root store is equal to root store. Uh, and so what we get from this, well actually let's add the uh, type up here. So root store is a root store. So the advantage is now we can access it by saying this dot uh, and root store dot, and we can access, for example, the workout data in our router store if we need to. Uh, and we're not gonna be needing it in this video, but we may need it in a future video. I'm gonna have copy this over and just paste this into the workout as well. All right, and we're just gonna import these. And then back to our root store. Uh, we're just gonna create a context from it. So we're say export const root store context is equal to create context and a new root store. So now how we actually use this in our application, we can go back to our router. Here we're gonna call this root store instead. Let's say root store context. 
and now we just say root store dot router store to access it. But if we wanted to, we also have access now to our workout store. So now we don't have to spam a bunch of contexts. We just access it through that. Um, and then we're just going to do the same thing in our workout history. That's the other place we're using the router store. All right. And oops, that should be root store dot router store. Then let's import those, give it a save, and uh, we're good to go. All right, so let's just make sure we didn't break anything. Um, if we come back over here, uh, we see everything nicely. I mean, we didn't really break it. It's compiling. Everything's good. All right, so that's the uh, root store uh, method, or I guess you'd say uh, uh, abstraction, I guess. So uh, next up, we're going to make this interactive. So to make this interactive, we want to start storing stuff in our workout store. Um, basically, we want to store the current workout. And uh, when the user clicks, we're going to decrement the amount of reps that they actually did on that workout. So for example, this means that they did five reps of the squat. All right, so we're going to come back over here. I'm going to make these fields observable. Observable. Um, and I'm just going to copy that and add it to each field. Um, and let's add a space, paste that in. All right, and we'll remove that. All right. Uh, so now I made each one of these observable. We're going to have an extra field on here, and this is going to be like the current exercises that the user is doing. So I'm going to say current exercises. And this is going to be an array. Um, so I'm going to make the call this current exercise. So we're going to create this type and it's going to be an array. And at first the array is going to be empty. So let's create an interface for this current exercise. Um, and for this, we're going to have a few things. So we're going to have the uh, weight, which is going to be a number. We're going to have the number of reps. So num reps. We have the number of sets and actually we're just going to say reps i think instead of num reps i think that makes more sense um, and then the exercise itself which is just going to be a string um, so that's pretty much all the data that we need to know about this uh, so we're just going to head on over to our workout history and we're going to just create a add-on to this current exercise array so here, whenever we uh, transition screens right here, we're just going to say root store dot workout store dot current exercises dot push. So we're just going to add a few exercises for them to do uh, right before we move to this screen. So, oh, there's one other thing that we need to add to that. We need to keep track of the sets that they're doing. So sets is going to be an array of strings. All right, so here we're gonna say uh, the name or the exercise is gonna be squat. The number of sets is going to be five. The reps is gonna be five. Now the sets is gonna be an array that looks something like this. So five, five, five. And I think later on we're gonna make a function to automatically create this for us, but uh, we'll hard code it for now and the weight we're gonna do at 260 today. Um, and so if we wanted to, we could do this a couple times. Um, and I think uh, with push, you can actually make this into a single call. So if I just do a comma there, do it like this. And we can do another exercise. So say we wanna do the bench press. Bench press. Uh, we'll do five, five, and then the weight, I'm only going to do 200 on. And then the deadlift, we're only going to do one set. So I'm going to say deadlift for 360, and this is all going to be X's. All right. And the number of sets is just going to be one. All right, so let's go to our current workout. So that is basically just going to read these values, map through them, and uh, render the cards. So let's do that. We're gonna first need to wrap this in an observable. Observ or sorry, observer. Because we wanna access that context. So root store 
use context. And here we're gonna do the root store context. And then instead of just having a single workout card like that, we're gonna say root store dot workout store dot current exercises dot map. And so for each exercise, which I guess we'll just call E, we're going to return a workout card. Um, so here I'm gonna say the key is just the name of the exercise and we can say Eda exercise there. Uh, and then the this this little thing right here we can create. So we'll make this a string template. So this is the amount of weight that they're doing. So E dot weight. This is the number of reps. So E dot reps. And this is the number of sets. So E dot num sets. Uh, and then this is the sets themselves. So we're going to say E dot sets. So we're going to give that a save. Let's come look at that. And it should just be rendering a couple cards. Um, but I messed up somewhere. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do real quick is, uh, oh, we add observer here. We're going to have to add observer to the workout card as well, because this is actually using the mob x values. I don't think that's our particular problem, though. Observer. Um, the other thing I wanted to do real quick is just in our, uh, I noticed when this was blank that this was not the right color. So if I come back over here and we go to our workout history, um, oh, sorry, it's current workout. You notice how we set the background color to FA, 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 and it's not showing? We just need to say flex one, I believe, so it stretches across the whole screen. Okay, so now you'll notice we have like this light gray and then there's this light blue, because we have some margin in our index, I think. Um, no, we didn't add any margin here. I don't know what we have a margin on. I don't know if we set a margin anywhere in our application. It could just be on the body itself that there's some kind of margin. If we do an inspect, maybe we'll be able to see it. We set a margin left. Oh, you know what? We did set a margin. We set it right here. Let's change that to padding. There we go. Now we have fully grayed. All right, so let's figure out what the heck is going wrong with this. Oh yeah, so we're actually starting on this current workout page when really we are never coming over to workout history and adding the items to the array. So that just means we need to come over to our router store and change the what the uh, basically the starting route is supposed to be workout history. So now if I come back over here, we create a workout. Uh, we can see the cards actually showing up, so nice. Uh, let's add a little bit of margin so that they uh, are not just like smashed against each other, but we can see we're programmatically creating our workout right here, so that's pretty neat. Um, so we'll just go back to, I guess, the workout card, and then in the card itself, we'll just set a margin bottom of 10. That seems to be the magic number we've been using. And create a workout, nice. All right, so lastly, we just want to be able to click and this will be kind of cycle through. So to do that, we're gonna just add an on press. Now we can't add an on press. Well, maybe you can add an on press to view. I don't even know if you can. It doesn't look like there's an on press property. But anyway, we're gonna use touchable opacity that has an on press that we can use. Um, and then what we're gonna do is take a on press function as a prop here. So we're gonna say on set press. Um, and what we're gonna pass in is the index that they pressed. And then it's just gonna be returning void. So this is the type definition for a function. And so here we're gonna say on set press. And here we're gonna say on set press. And then we're just gonna pass in the index. So in our function up here, we're gonna to have to actually handle this and actually update the, uh, the little circle. Um, so we're gonna make this a touchable opacity and the X, we do not need to make a touchable opacity. So we can just ignore that. So let's copy this and we're gonna just paste it in here. Um, and let's just, there we go. And uh, come back to our current workout now, implement this onset press. 
So this is going to be the set index. And so what we're going to do is uh, we basically know what the current value is. So we say, uh, call it V, which is going to be the current exercise sets set index. So this V is just going to be, for example, a string that says the value five, because we're just getting the current set. And so we're just going to check if the current set is blank, because if it is, uh, we're going to say new value is a string. And we're going to say the new value should be uh, after you hit nothing, it should be, I believe, five. Or really, it should be the number of reps. So we're going to say E reps. And we need to make that into a string. So back ticks like that. Else if V is equal to zero, it is now, oops, not return, is equal to an empty string, single. And then else, the new value is going to be uh, whatever the current value is, minus one. So value is currently a string, so we're gonna say parse int v minus one, and then this needs to be a string, so we're gonna convert it like that. And then lastly, since we're using mobx, uh, we can just directly update the, the value. Now I don't know if we can just update the value here that we're mapping through. We can try that and see if that will work. So I can say dot sets, set index, and that's equal to the new value. All right, so let's see if this updates when we click on anything now. So go create, and sure enough, it does. So we can just modify it there, which is pretty neat. Okay, so we can see, we can cycle through that now. Um, so click that. Notice we click on the X, doesn't do anything. Um, but so yeah, so how this works is, for example, if I'm deadlifting, I basically, you know what, actually everything should start off at uh, blank. So go to workout history. This should actually start out all blank, not a bunch of fives. It should look like that when it starts. And then as I squat, when I do the first squat, I'll click it. I did five reps, then I did five reps. And then here, maybe I only did three reps. And then here I went down to, I don't know, zero reps and I failed. Uh, so that's kind of how you keep track of your reps as you're doing it. Uh, so that is it for this video, guys. We've programmatically kind of controlled this part. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.